Interesting. And this is really focused on monitoring the edge of the network. <laughs> okay. So I'll talk a little bit about what edge means to us. Um, edge computing, edge network, SD-WAN, they kind of tie together. Uh, and the reason for that is really simple. A lot of data in a lot of our customers' networks don't always traverse all the way to the cloud. They stay local. Distribution centers, manufacturing, healthcare, building to building communication or within building communication, they all are present right there. So if you want to monitor something, where do you monitor it? You monitor it where the data is, right? You don't move it around. Uh, so you have to monitor right where the data is. And this is uh, happening without us really observing it so much, like we're in this room, a lot of data here. A lot of it will stay here, a lot of it will go out. Uh, but I want to give you an example we can kind of attach to, okay? Edge computing at Chick-fil-A. Everyone know what that company does, right? It's a, rest, it's a fast food restaurant. Um, they use edge computing there um, because th they wanted to have some of the principles of cloud computing available at the storefront. So they have high availability mini service. They make use of all the same enterprise technologies, Kubernetes to Docker containers uh, to build out applications. So when you walk in, you're actually being serviced by a pretty well built up edge platform that actually is for the intention of serving you fast food, right? And if you look at it, if you want to monitor those sites, and those sites are very important because they are your bread and butter, right? Um, you have hundreds of these edge sites, I'll call them, okay? So the definition for us, edge, is as small as you'd like it to be, as big as they come. So the small could be a restaurant, uh, a distribution site could be a bigger edge site, right? Um, so there's hundreds of these sites, thousands of devices, millions of things in factories and places, and it's only gonna go uh, higher. So the scale of problems that you now have to contend with as network operations, security operations is quite different. You're not in this 15 data centers, and you're in 15,000 sites, so it's big. Uh, so a different approach is needed. Now typically, you would monitor it how? You'd monitor right at the hub site. Well, you can do that, but there's a lot of data that never made it there. Um, what's necessary then is to monitor it right at the edge. Um, and so one of our products in our vision portfolio is completely software defined. Um, and it's an appliance, it's an x86 appliance that we launched in February, and its purpose is to be placed right at the edge. So if you think about SD-WAN, uh, it had a failure to launch 10 years ago, but now it's tremendously successful, and um, you have hundreds of sites, yet you manage them from a common place, right? All of your policies, what you do, what you don't, is centrally managed, but they're very highly distributed uh, environments that they get placed in. This follows the same principle. It's software defined. It does packet monitoring, meaning it can take copies of packets like a traditional packet broker would, but it also does flow monitoring, meaning if I'm only interested in metadata, no packets, we'll take the packets, we'll create metadata from it, and send it to an analytics tool in the cloud or on-prem. And then what's interesting about this is most of these edge sites, what do they not have? They don't have IT support. So another benefit of this uh, platform is that this is your eyes and ears and hands at hundreds of remote sites. So synthetic monitoring helps you troubleshoot. Oftentimes the first thing, if you have a problem, you might what, drop to a command prompt and type trace route or ping, right? Why do you do that? You do that because you want to know right now what does, what do, is there a packet drop somewhere? Where is it? What hop did something happen on? Well, this is meant to help you do that because it automatically runs this test 24 seven on your network and it advises you that there are issues, there's repeated issues. So synthetic monitoring helps you really kind of bring it together, you're at sites for monitoring and also for troubleshooting. Can so, I just, can yeah. I just ask here that, and I'm glad that you mentioned the importance of having that monitoring set at the edge location itself, because obviously one of the concerns when you have such sites is connectivity, and the site should be designed to be able to withstand or run independently if the link goes down. Yeah. So in that case, two things come to mind, that you know it's still 
bandwidth connectivity, bandwidth available is already typically thin or narrow. Very yeah. limited, yeah. And you'd yeah. be taking a bandwidth if all of that is going to the uh, right. remote side. So how much bandwidth? And I, I, I understand that uh, brokers can help by stripping out the unwanted data. Yeah. But still, some bandwidth will be needed for that. How right. much would that be in terms of ratio? So I'd say ratio would be hard to tell you because it will really be based on what customers typically capture. At the worst, it'd be double, right? Because everything I wanted, I want it all. But on the monitoring fabric, the reality is at these edge sites, right next to our packet brokers will sit sort of an analytics product uh, that we feed. So I'd say in most practical scenarios is very little because edge sites get monitored. Um, our healthcare customers, for example, every office they have, they need it protected. Anything that comes in has to be monitored through very various different tiers before it gets on. So you have packet brokers and you have analytics tools right at that site. So very little is probably the case. Uh, worst case is it's double, but that's impractical and no one actually implements it this way. I mean, in that case, I mean, the other option would be to say, whatever is being captured, even if it's not being sent immediately, yeah. um, you can store it somewhere. Absolutely. So what's that provision? Yeah. Um, is there an uh, export type facility? Yeah. So we, we do it two ways. So the, the question is, can we save data for long term? So packet brokers are a transit device, meaning we are wire speed 24-7, right? So typically what will happen is we can capture short bursts of, of traffic based <coughs> on what you like and save it as a libpcap format file. So we can do that, but that's typically there for troubleshooting purposes. Something's wrong, you get on it, and you're gonna troubleshoot, capture packets, and take a look. The other way is that we work with a lot of our partners that actually do high-speed storage. So our packet brokers are high-speed packet processors, and then we send it out to tool, tools that are analytics that actually do the packet capture. right? And they save it locally on there. So it's available for search and, and all that, afterwards, you know, typically a week, it could be a year, it depends on, on how big the storage arrays are. Yep. I have a question. Um, in the event that there was a network partition, is the, is the physical device able to, to queue some of that data for, like, and for how long or whatever until connection to the, the monitoring platform is then restored? Um, yes and no. So it, it'll depend, yes, if, if it's set up for flow analytics, so we can keep it for many, many days. Okay. Um, but if it's just raw packets, yeah, it, it cannot, because we're a transit device. We would just be sending it to the tool. So it would depend on the configuration. It would. It would depend on the configuration. But flow analytics, yes, we keep it for a little, a little while, but not for actual okay. packets. Right. Um, so I'll, uh, so if you look at our portfolio, uh, I didn't touch on many, but I just talked about Vision Edge 1S meant to be deployed at, at any number of edge sites that does synthetic monitoring, packet broker, as well as flow analytics. And uh, in an earlier session, I talked about Vision X. So we have a wide portfolio. And the reason this exists is because of sizing of our customer network, right? So if you wanted to do rack level visibility, you'd probably look at these ones. If you want to do very high density analytics, um, and packet capture, you look at Vision 1 and Vision X and the, and the largest 7300.